We present a system for abstract visualization of memory cache behavior, whose purpose is to better understand the behavior of algorithms within a system's cache. Our system provides an abstract view of the underlying hardware and software infrastructure by representing memory as glyphs which move between various levels of the memory hierarchy. This allows students and software engineers to gain valuable insights into the design of their software by means of visual analysis. Here we see a schematic of our system layout. The centermost point represents the system processor. Our display lays out three regions, whose locations represent the distance to the processor. The region immediately adjacent to the processor is the level 1 cache, followed by the level 2 cache, and the main memory at the farthest distance. Individual data items are represented by point data glyphs. As a memory location is accessed, its associated glyph moves through the levels of the cache towards the processor. Its size increases and its color flashes. As a memory location becomes stale from lack of use, its data glyph moves further from the processor until it is finally evicted from level 1 to level 2. If the data continues to be unused, it will eventually be evicted from the level 2 cache as well. To better visualize long sequences, the visualization is sped up and path lines are added to summarize time. Our first case study looks at a matrix multiply. Here, a standard matrix multiplication is performed on 16 by 16 matrices. In this case, the size of the matrices makes the data required to calculate a single output entry too large to fit in either the L1 or L2 cache. The result is poor cache performance because the data from the right-hand matrix needs to be read in repeatedly. One simple optimization is to transpose the right-hand matrix. The result is a sweeping action with better caching performance than a standard matrix multiply. Here, each cache line which is brought into the L1 cache has all of its elements used before it is evicted. Nevertheless, cache lines from the right-hand matrix will still need to be brought in from main memory repeatedly. A final well-known optimization for matrix multiply is to use blocking for better cache occupancy. Here we see an example using 4x4 four four blocks. Surprisingly, the cache performance is not as good as one might expect. The size of our matrix and block configuration causes conflict misses. In this case, some L2 lines lie unused during the processing of certain blocks. With a 12x12 12 12 matrix and 4x4 four four blocks, the problem is resolved and the caching performance is closer to what one would expect. Here we look at a bubble sort on 96 elements. Despite its n-squared running time, bubble sort has reasonably good caching performance. When the working set is large, the algorithm sweeps through the data using temporally coherent access patterns. As the algorithm approaches completion, cache performance improves significantly as the working set becomes smaller, eventually fitting into L2 and finally L1. As a comparison, we look at cache behavior of merge sort. Aside from the obvious benefit of merge sort's n log n runtime, the algorithm displays similar types of cache behavior to bubble sort. Merge sort displays good cache behavior, while the sizes of lists to merge are small enough to fit into cache. As the working set becomes larger, the cache performance decreases, though the merge operation still performs temporally coherent sweeps through the data. The biggest disadvantage of merge sort, as compared to bubble sort, is the need for temporary storage space, which reduces the number of elements that fit in the cache by half. The material point method, or MPM, is an iterative mechanical engineering simulation method in which objects are discretized into collections of points. We show the MPM method as an example of our system's ability to visualize the cache performance of larger working sets in real applications. The MPM method shows good cache behavior as it sweeps through the set of variables. As individual time steps are completed, the system can be observed sweeping through certain variables resetting their values for the next time step. 